Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you a digital sundial and explaining how it works. This is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Now sundials have been used to tell time for a very long time. The oldest sundial ever found was found in Egypt in the Valley of the Kings and it dates to around 1500 BC. But today we're going to show the improvement on that and show the world's first digital sundial. So the design for this came from an engineer named Mojoptix. And he actually has a really cool website and a video where he explains exactly how this is working and how he came up with the design. It's really interesting. I'll put the link in the description, go check it out. So the problem with having a digital sundial is having pixels that turn on and off in a non-electronic clock. How do you do it? Well, you can do it with a clever method using shadows. Let me show you what I mean. So I have here a half a sphere of styrofoam that I've drilled two holes in. So one hole I've drilled straight down the center but then another hole I've drilled on the side of it and it comes out at the same hole at the bottom here. Okay, so now let's say that this is our pixel that we wanted to turn on and off. You can see the circle in the center of the sphere here. So if we want to turn it off, we just have to rotate the sphere a little bit and it turns off. But if we want to turn it back on, then we just have to keep rotating the sphere and then it turns back on. And then if we keep rotating it, it turns off again. So you can see that just through this rotation, it turns on, off, on, off, on, off, on. So this example was only one pixel. We just had one outlet that the light could come through. But in order to make the digital clock, we need a lot of pixels so we can actually make out a number. So you just start off with a base like this that has all the pixels that you would need to tell the time. So in this example here, here's all the pixels that could be on. So here's the finished product that I 3D printed with all of the different tunnels through it. You can actually see it change as I just rotate it here. So it's gonna start at one. One, change to two, three, four, five, and six. So you can see all the different holes that need to be on and off depending on the location of the sun across the arc here. Okay, so first I'm just gonna stick it out in the sun. I'm gonna actually rotate the sundial so you can actually see the times change here. So in this case, the sun isn't actually doing the changing, but I'm changing the rotation of the sundial so you should be able to see the time change pretty easily. Whoa, look at it just scroll through the time. So it goes up through, it uses army time and also you can see that it's only going every 20 minutes. So it goes from zero to 20 minutes to 40 minutes and then turns to the next hour. Okay, now let's see if it actually works with the sun moving through the sky. So I get it at the right angle and then I match it to my clock. You can see that it matches my clock perfectly and now let's just run it on time lapse and see what it looks like as the sun moves through the sky. Okay, that is amazing. Look at the time change as the sun moves. So no more analog sundials. You can actually look at a digital clock using just the sun. That's so amazing. So the question is, we see we can make a digital sundial, and these sundials that are as old as 1500 BC still work today. But the question is, how long will they continue working and still read the correct time? Well, the thing with sundials is that because the Earth's orbit isn't exactly circular, it's actually an ellipse, and also because the Earth is tilted a little bit on its axis as it rotates around the sun, it means that throughout the year, depending on the day, the reading on the sundial won't be exactly correct. But there are equations you can use to figure out exactly what correction you need to make to the sundial. But besides those corrections, there's actually another major reason that would stop a sundial from reading the correct time over many centuries and many hundreds of thousands of years. And that's because of the moon. 
So in the past 2,700 years, the Earth's rotation has actually slowed by around six hours. So the gravitational interaction between the Earth and the Moon continually are trying to slow the Earth down until the Moon's rotation matches the Earth's rotation. And eventually that will happen, but it'll be around another 50 billion years or so until they match. What that means is that we continually have to add time to our day in order for it to equal the amount of time it takes for the sun to move across the sky. For example, when the dinosaurs roamed the Earth, a day was only around 23 hours long. Now it's 24 hours long. And because of that fact, we actually had to change the definition of a second. The definition of a second used to be based on a function of the amount of time it took for the sun to move across the sky. But we know that that's continually changing. So we had to change the definition of a second. After 1967, the definition of a second was now based on the amount of uh, atomic transitions in the cesium atom, which is more stable than the amount of time it takes for the sun to move across the sky. But even though the Earth's rotation is slowing down a little bit and the days are getting slightly longer, this digital sundial is guaranteed to outlast almost any other electronic clock on the Earth today, if you make it out of the right material. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and you can also hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest video comes out and turn on your notifications. And check out theactionlab.com if you want to see the Action Lab experiment boxes. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.